I just found out some really shocking information, everyone. It's the fact that Zelensky is a Jew. Did you hear that? Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, is a Jew. And because he's a Jew, it's not possible for there to be any Nazis in Ukraine. It's just not possible. How can a country have a Jewish president and have Nazis in it? It's just inconceivable. It can't happen. So if anyone ever says that there are Nazis in Ukraine, just tell them. Not Zelensky's Jewish, that's impossible. Why would a country elect a Jewish leader if it's packed full of Nazis? It can't happen. There you go, problem solved. Simple as that. Unless, of course, there are Nazis in Ukraine. Unless, of course, The Sun uploads a video that gets 200,000 views and just forgets to blur out the part where there's a guy that has SS Galician on his back, on his body armour, while he protects the president and upholds law and order. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> the double bolt Galician. And then, I think, does that say SBU? Is that what it's meant to say? SBU? C is S. That kind of looks like a B. And Y is kind of shaped like U is shaped. So I'm going to just assume that's what it says. And then you have it. Guy with guy that's like 40 or 50 or something. And has a rifle. And this is the funny thing as well. Like the, the way religion and fascism comes together. Well, it would actually be Nazism, wouldn't it? <laughs> Not just fascism. So you've got the Orthodox Church doing the things that it does in society and right beside them you have Nazis <laughs> and of course the comments jumped right on top of this which was really funny top comment 2300 view, uh, upvotes SS Galician i.e. the 14th SS Grenadier Division formerly known as the 14th Volunteer Division Galicia which was established during World War II from Galician volunteers of Ukrainian origin. This division was established in 1943, but was destroyed during the lviv sandomierz operation, later rebuilt, intervening, for example, during the Slovak National Uprising, and on May 10th, 1945, surrendered to the Western Allies. So they scurried away from the Russians and surrendered to the Americans. That's something a lot of the Nazis tried to do when they could. If anyone didn't know, SS Galitsyn was a World War II German military formation made up predominantly of military volunteers with a Ukrainian ethnic background from the area of Galicia, later also with some Slovaks. There is no Nazism in Ukraine. Why we give them any weapon? <laughs> and this is a thing, of course. There's videos of Azov holding British in-laws. So we are sending over equipment that is worth tens of thousands of dollars per unit and it ends up in the hands of extreme right fascists that glorify all of the worst parts of the losing side of World War II. SS Galician, one of the most criminal formations of World War II, a thousand upvotes. This person's from the security service of Ukraine. These same people are protecting Zelensky. Even worse than Azov. Yep, that is only truth on the sun. I'll, I learned this recently because I've been doing quite a lot catching up on all of this stuff over the past couple of months because this wasn't something that I actually paid that much attention to until Ukraine was invaded. I knew the basic outline of course because I had to pay attention to this back in 2014 for a few different reasons but I didn't find it as interesting as I have recently so I've been reading about it and I learned that the UPA the militant wing of the organization of Ukrainian nationalists, they were actually considered way worse than SS Galician, which is a regiment that exchanged personnel with the Durlevanger Brigade. So SS Galician was seen as a moderate alternative to the UPA, which is just shocking. <laughs> Imagine being worse than the Nazis. That's what Ukrainian extreme ultra-nationalists were. <laughs> and uh, the UPA tried to infiltrate SS Galician and take control of it, but they failed. So it retained fundamentally German, German Nazi. 
part of the SS, controlled by the SS, with overlap with the OUN and the Banderites. Yeah, this lore, Nazi lore of Ukraine is interesting shit. And I'm not even getting into the subject of the video yet, I've just been talking about this stuff, because it's so interesting. Yep, so, that's to preface this, uh, see the the discourse around the war in Ukraine over the past two months, it has, immediately I noticed that it just started off as a complete perversion that had no correspondence with reality whatsoever. It was all propaganda and driven by agenda, motivated. So you really had to figure things out for yourself and trust no one, and trust nothing. So that's part of why I've been reading about it. And I saw a lot of people saying things like, there are no Nazis in Ukraine. And as I said at the start, Zelensky is a Jew though. <laughs> so that just, that made me want to get to the bottom of this even more. And when you see stuff like this, <laughs> oh my god. That just really gives the game away, doesn't it? But let's look at something else. Uh, I came across something completely accidentally. This is a YouTube channel with 14 subscribers, and it's a pretty innocuous, innocent channel. It just documents aspects of Ukrainian everyday life. Like, you have some nice ceremonies and stuff going on here, like walking on Kiev, just walking around like a tourist. Uh, ski resort in Ukraine. A castle. So there's some some of these videos are pretty cool and you have like singing and stuff, you have choirs. Some some of them are nice, but there's one set of videos here that really is not very nice, and we're gonna look at that and see what we can spot in terms of Well there's a <laughs> there's a way to start a video. Rifle at the at the boots of a guy in German military uniform, Nazi military uniform. But yeah, we're going to try and see how much Nazi symbolism we can spot in this video of a burial of someone from SS Galicia. S SS Galician. So, this is, I think, supposed to just be a funeral. Gonna put the video quality up. And we're gonna... This, this has 371 views. Uh... And it only has two comments on it. One of them came a month ago because people started Googling Galicia, which is how I came across this myself. But even still, I'm one of the first people to come across this. So this is untouched. This is pure and untouched. Unbesmirched by the conflict. Other than this one comment here. Interjecting. But yeah, this, this is a good... <laughs> A good way to look at things from an objective perspective, don't you think? To just come across a set of videos of a burial, a ceremony, that is not uploaded for profit. It doesn't serve any agenda or purpose. This is just completely amateur footage. July 28th, 2016, documenting a burial to honour. It says here, sharing and honouring. So it's just some long dead... SS Galician member that presumably was exhumed and is now being interred, reburied, and properly honoured. So let's see what that looks like. And this is in Ukraine. And I'll turn on subtitles. No, I can't. Maybe when they start talking. I couldn't figure out what this is. This is one of my few failures. I couldn't figure out what this means. We obviously have a cross here. We have the blue and the yellow of Ukraine. And blue is in reference to the sky above. And yellow is in reference to the ground covered in wheat fields. And believe it or not, the more outraged someone is at this war the less likely they are to know if it's blue above yellow or yellow above blue. But now you have a foolproof way to remember that. The blue goes on top because it represents the sky. That's what the Ukrainian flag means. And if anyone knows what this means, red and white and black, that makes me think it has Nazi influence because that is all the Nazi flag colours, white, 
black, red. So you've got the blue and the yellow of Ukraine, and then you have black, white, red outside it, and then you have the Iron Cross, but it's a weirdly shaped cross. It's like a... It kind of looks like a religious cross, and I don't know what the text says, and maybe it'll be difficult to see, but if anyone knows what this text says and what this means, let me know. Let's keep going. See if we can find more symbols. And this is a five-part video series. I think I think it's five parts, so we have a lot to go through. Five, so that's a news reporter from some TV station covering this. So this is a pretty typical event. It has some prestige because you've got TV crews turning up to cover it. So it's not like this is some weird event. This has some mainstream coverage. They want to expose it, let the public see it for whatever reason. Has What's he got around his neck? It's like dog tags or something. And then you have... Oh. <laughs> Alright, so you've got SS Galitzin here. This is the lion. Alright, here it is. It is three crowns and a lion. And it's yellow and blue. So that is the SS Galitzin insignia. And that is on this vehicle. It kind of looks like a half-track, but I don't think there's any tracks. It's a, an armoured vehicle. This is the Balkan cruise. This is the Beam Cross. So this was used by all aspects of the German armed forces. It was used by the Luftwaffe. You saw it in movies. It was used by the the Navy, Kriegmarine, and it was used by the army itself, the here, and it was also used on SS, like the Panzers, all their tanks. So if you see this symbol here, it means that this is fighting for Germany, Nazi Germany. And it goes all the way back, I think, to the Holy Roman Empire. And I think it stopped at the end of World War II. So this is a Nazi symbol. So this is Nazi Germany being represented on an armoured fighting vehicle with an iron cross of SS Galician. And I think down here... You have, let's see if I can see that a bit clearer. Yeah, there we go, I should have just kept going. So this here is a rectangle, red and black. And I think that means, is that UPA? Is that Ukrainian? Yeah, this is an interesting thing as well. So a lot of the flags and banners that you see from Ukrainian nationalists and ultranationalists is red and black, just like the German nationalists, the Nazis. And in terms of Ukraine, the meaning of the colours, I think, is a bit different. It could be derived directly from the Nazi, red, white and black. But in Ukraine, they think of red and black as being what happens when a Ukraine flag is soaked in blood. Oh, here's an example that I just found. So, <laughs> a couple of kids doing this to learn this shit, presumably. So, when the yellow and the blue of Ukraine is dipped in blood, blood steeped, blood soaked, you get blood and soil. I've read that in a couple of places. I don't know to what extent that's true compared to just being taken directly from Nazi Germany's symbolism. It's like there's there's two wheels underneath this. Does that mean that this is a UPA fighting vehicle? Who knows? Maybe someone knows. <laughs> Do you see that there? That is the Reich Saddler. We'll get to see that up closer in a minute. There's another cross. Look at this old guy just... <laughs> shambling his way around the place. And he's got a medal there. And this was in 2016. So this guy... If he was 20 back in... 1945... 
then he would have been about 90 here. So if he's a veteran that was born in 1925 and fought at the end of the war, he would be about 90 by now. See how all these veterans are, are starting to get really, really old, super old centenarians and just dying and dropping like flies. Not many of them left. He's got his medal there though, good on him. And you saw that on the guys, there, there's an obvious example. That's the Reich Saddler, I'm gonna get that up. So if the eagle is facing to the left, it represents the party, and if the eagle faces to the right, like this one, then it represents the Reich. So you, I remember that by right Reich for the Reich Saddler. So that's how I remember that. And I wish I could see that closer, and then you would actually be able to see the swastika, which of course is the ultimate symbol of Nazism. But you can just assume that that's there, I think. Like, you can assume that there's a swastika underneath that. Unless we get a closer view. There you go, a swastika there. I see a swastika. And that's uh, MG42. So, they've got the swastika. They've got a pin there as well. I see a pin. What's on that pin? But yeah, like, there's a swastika there. Uh, we've seen Reichsadlers, which are the symbol of Nazi Germany. So all the symbols are here. And the MG42 of course. Hitler's buzzsaw. So they're all kitted out. Kitted out and representing. And this is a really casual thing, no one thinks anything of it. It's just normal. 2016. They're, they're standing there in those uniforms proudly. Oh, what's he got? Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> I was so glad that they went down here and showed this. Look at this shit. There's Bandera right there. The main guy for the nationalists, the ultra-nationalists in Ukraine. And then we've got all this other bullshit as well. There's a guy in religious orders there. Uh, hard to really make out much of the other ones. People that know, know Russian Cyrillic. The people that know how to read this can tell me what these titles are of these books. But it's like a, a fucking stall. <laughs> this shit is all funded. You can just walk up and take your pick. But yeah, Bandera, he's the the ultimate piece of shit in Ukraine, and at the same time, he's one of the national heroes. It's perverse. Man, that's a lot of dead Nazis. And these are Nazis, because this is the SS. And you see it right there, they're wearing all of the Nazi symbols. And the oath that they take to be part of the 14th Waffen SS Galician is a pledge to Hitler and to Nazi Germany. It's not to Ukraine, it is to Nazism. That's what they all pledged to before they were killed, presumably, by the Red Army. It's a lot of dead Ukrainians. It's a lot. And it was all for nothing, because the same fight has been fought again. Unresolved. And you see this in the window as well, I think that's stained glass. You see the three crowns, see it? One, two, three, and then the lion. And then that one there, I don't know what that one is. But you have SS Galician, even on the fucking windows. It's not like they just put on a uniform for one day and that's it. It's part of the environment. <laughs> Oh, 
there's even a a place in Ukra- in uh, Canada where there's a monument to the 14th Waffen SS and it Wait, gets what? vandalized. All right, let's look at the next one now. So the second one, that's this one. Oh, here we go. <laughs> look at this guy here. Look at <laughs> look at this guy. <laughs> Holy shit. What is that a fucking colonel or major or something? Is the real deal there? Yeah, banners. East West Eurolines. It's like a tourist attraction. And this was in Ukraine in 2016. Another old dude, really old guy. What rifles do these guys have? Oh, look at that guy there. Do you see it? Is that a swastika? Look at this shit. Look at this fucking garbage. They fucking lost. <laughs> I remember our royal family got in a lot of shit because one of one of the princes put on a Nazi uniform. Yep, this year, Clarence House was last night forced on a major damage li- limitation exercise after Prince Harry was pictured in Nazi uniform at a fancy dress party. The photograph splashed across the front page of the sun showed the Prince of Wales, his youngest son, enjoying a drink and a cigarette while dressed as a member of Rommel's Africa Corps, complete with a prominent swastika armband. <laughs> so that was some fuck. That was some poor taste, fucked up, fancy dress party thing that they were doing, but this is like, this is meant to be honouring the fallen and they dress up in this fucking dog shit to do that. I should mention that in every other country, I think, apart from Ukraine, if you were in the SS, you are not entitled to the status of veteran. It's a, you're dishonoured you're shamed, you're not considered to be a real veteran, unless you were conscripted. So if you volunteer to be in the SS, if you voluntarily join the SS, which is an organisation that had ethnic racial requirements, then you are not considered to be a veteran. You are dishonoured forever. Now look at that guy. Scowling. I would be scowling too if I was standing there looking around at all these fucks. <laughs> Is that an SVT-40? Russian rifle in the hands of SS. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> the close up. Look at this fucking dickhead. Look at this arsehole. Oh, I should mention. Oh, th- there you see it. There's the belt buckle. <laughs> Only thing that's missing from this is Gott mit uns. God with us. So you've got here, I think this is called the Totenkopf Death's Head, and that's from. Death's Head Hussars of the Holy Roman Empire, and it was used right up until the end of World War II, because of course all of these symbols are symbols of shame. So that's why all of this stuff stopped being used after World War II. Totenkopf means death, it's like the skull and crossbones, so it's like only pirates and Nazis wear this symbol. And then over here you've got a swastika with a wreath and a sword in the middle. So that's a sword in front of a swastika. And then you've got a German 
army helmet with a swastika in front of it and crossed swords. And then of course, on his army cap, you've got the Reichsadler. And wh which direction does that face? I wonder if I could get a high, a high resolution glance at it. I think it's facing... Is that facing to the left? It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. SS Galician there. Uh, what is here? Is, what's on? What's the significance of this? I don't know. It's got his buttons. Look at that horrible bastard. Look at that cunt. <laughs> fucking hell. Alright, let's go on to the next one. They've just got all of the fucking symbols and they're wearing them in 2016. And this was two years after Maidan. And of course, this is all about opposing the Russians, the Red Army, the Soviets, Russia. That's what this is all about. That's why SS Galician is held up. Because it fought for Nazi Germany, the Third Reich, against the Soviets, the Communists. That's what this is all about. That's why they're venerated to this day. And then you've got singing bullshit. And it's so weird to have all of these men of God, these holy men, these men of principle that are responsible for the most important things, life and death and purpose and meaning. They are standing in the midst of Nazis, fascists, <laughs> it's just always weird, even though I'm well aware of the historical association between Christians and Nazis, of the religious and the reprehensible. It's always just weird to see someone standing there in all their nice garb, lending their traditions and rituals to absolute pieces of shit, the scum of society. Every time I see it, it's just... <laughs> it's an absurd, ludicrous juxtaposition. Yeah, and they've got the incense things there. I've actually got some of them that I've had for years. I think we can skip through this because it's just a religious ceremony, but I wanted to comment that. Let's see how- oh, there's a- where's the nearest Nazi? Let's see how close the nearest Nazi is. Oh yeah, and this is part of the ritual as well. Look at this blessing Nazis. <laughs> he shot it. <laughs> yeah, LARPer. Bunch of LARPers. Look at this. Fucking Nazis standing in a church. <laughs> Man. Ukrainian flag there. Cross right above Nazis, look at that. Right above them. Almost like it's about to beam them up into heaven. The fuck is that an MP40? Look at that, they've even got... They've got religious art depicting modern soldiers. They even have uh, a World War II era looking submachine gun in the hands of a guy in uniform and a helmet. <laughs> oh, that is so fucked. <laughs> so the soldiers here. The priests over there. 
Look at this horrible bastard. Look at that belt buckle, he's got all of it. He even knows how to hold his hat, look at him. He knows the right way to hold the hat so that you can see all the horrible shit on the front of it, even when it's not on his head. Alright, I've seen enough of this, let's find something interesting. So they're standing there to honour the dead guy who's presumably in the coffin down by their feet, and that's what was being blessed with all the rituals. So that's meant to represent his comrades around him. Look at this, re re holy men in front of fucking Nazis. <laughs> Look at the skills. Jesus. Look how serious and solemn they are. It's almost like they expect to just get shot. They know what they're doing, don't they? They know they're standing in fucking Nazi uniforms that that everyone despises. Whole world united against them because they're so despicable. Two guys with berets, three guys with berets, one, two, three. SS Galician on the side. Oh, and the flags are interesting. A lot of these people are really old, but some of them are not. And then, oh, see that, that beret there? You've got the... Oh, is that called the trizub? Oh, it's difficult to remember this. Alright, so here is the symbol that I've seen elsewhere that immediately reminded me of this on this guy's hat. That is, I think, the same symbol. And when you do a reverse image search, see it? It's got to be the same fucking symbol, doesn't it? And if you do a reverse image search on that, this is what you get. Possible related search. Stepan Bandera's birthday. <laughs> and it goes to... Oh! Wait. Yep, yeah, Stepan Bandera. So a guy has that on his hat, and it's for this fucking bullshit. I don't know. Alright, let's see if we can translate all of this. <sighs> anyway, I found it. That is definitely it. We've got them. Like, that's, that's it. It's on his beret. And then there's a flag here. That has this. Uh, yeah, I really. I've been wishing so many times that I can read Russian or Cyrillic. All Ukrainian organization Trident, named after Stepan Bandera, an organization of the order type built on principles of traditional Ukrainian Christianity, the ideology of Ukrainian nationalism, and the interpretation of Bandera. <laughs> yeah. So it is a Banderite fraternity that he has a beret for. And it probably has paramilitary significance as well, probably. Because all this shit does. <laughs> Nothing gets past me. <laughs> Blue and yellow sunflowers, that's nice. The only nice thing in this entire horrible fucking place. <laughs> 
So there's young and old there alike. What's on his his hat? Oh, that's the. It's the coat of arms of Ukraine, but it's also all over the organization of Ukrainian nationalist symbolism imagery. So if it's turning up here, that's what it's been invoked as. Stands to reason. And that's it. Then we've got part four. And there is still stuff that's interesting to look at. Part four. Three minutes, this one. UPA and OUN, brutal murderers of Poles, Jews, Czechs and other nationalities. Shame on you and your ancestors <laughs> three weeks ago. <laughs> so people are finding this stuff. Let's see if there's any comments on three... Nup, on two, nup, and on one. Yeah, and then I'll have, I'll have part five up as well uh, to be ready to prepare. And this guy left a comment three years ago and said, Nazi pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how that got filtered. Like if you have top comments, you don't see it. You have to click newest first to see that. A Russian saying Nazi pieces of shit. Let's hear it. Nazi kuski gavna. Nazi no. Nazi kuski gavna. Nazi ski kuf. Nazi kuski gavna. Nazi kuski gavna. <laughs> Nazi pieces of shit. All right, let's get back to part four. And keep going. Slava Ukraini! Which it just so happens was popularized by the OUN. So I thought about this, and people usually associate a phrase like Allahu Akbar with terrorism or jihad or violence, but there's almost no relationship between that phrase and violence. It's a stereotype. Like almost every time someone says Allahu Akbar, they have no aggressive, violent sentiments attached whatsoever. Praise to God. You just see it in viral videos of people in Iraq firing off uh, guided missiles that arrive at tanks 10 seconds later and then they'll say it. But it's something that Muslims say all the time. On the other hand, Slava Ukraini, fucking hell, that shit was popularized by banderites in the OUN back in the 30s and the 40s. So it's a lot easier to draw a connection between the phrase Slava Ukraini and violence than Allahu Akbar and violence and terrorism and death and horror and misery. Just something that I thought there to show how skewed this entire conversation is. Let's go back and see if we can spot anything yet that might only be on screen here. Uh, oh yeah, the, the flags of course. So see this flag here? Yep, yeah, this is what that is. The Ukrainian National Assembly, the Ukrainian People's Self-Defense. This is a far-right Ukrainian nationalist organization composed by a political wing and a paramilitary wing. So, this was founded in 1990 and it was dissolved in 2014, the political wing, and it merged into the right sector.
So that's what this is. This is a symbol of resistance to the Soviets. And then, I can't see what this one is. Can't see what that one is. But is there anything else that we can observe? Oh. I think that's just a black and white version of the coat of arms of Ukraine. Yeah, you have kids there, you have one there, one there, kids here, young and old. And this was one that confused me. I couldn't figure out any of what this meant on Moan apart from the cross, but you've got a bell and a candle and apparently this is a small commission that was set up to bury veterans. It's a burial organization so they are the ones in charge of what's going on here. They're running this. You have another one there. Oof, look all the medals on this guy. He's been through the shit. Ні в цях на сьому годину у школі. Так що прошу, запрошую всіх, хто має можливість прийти переглянути цей фільм, пригадати історію наших героїв. It's really sad though. These frail old guys that are probably people's granddads and they were once fighting underneath Nazi banners. <laughs> Tragic, sad shit. And that guy was so eager to go, he didn't even have the mic. And we can get subtitles for this. Auto translate. I heard someone pulling a bolt back there on a rifle, I think. <laughs> Talking about Cossacks a lot. Oh yeah, the fucking Soviets love those. Bolsheviks. This is part four, so we have another one. And that's it. You can hear drones flying around as well. So they even had drones here. Um, part five. Let's get this going. This is the last one. But so far I think we've seen everything. Let's see if we can find more swastikas, come on. It's been a while. Ten minutes. 
I think this is actually meant to be part four, and the other one's part five. Because they haven't lured in yet in this one. So the order's off. But yeah, that was a good close up there on the beret, coat of arms of Ukraine, and then SS Galician. Man, it's a lot of Nazis. There's at least 10 Nazis here. There's a sword. A sword on that one, wonder what that one means. Look how I'm desperate to get out of there. It's packed full of Nazis now. I've got to, let me get the fuck out of here. Let me the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> the hell was that? The fuck is that man? Doing reps? I want to look for details here. What, there was something I wanted to see a close up that I didn't get to. Oh man, what's that guy got? Nah, never mind. Yeah, this is the one that was lowered down, wasn't it? Yeah. So these are the guys that honour the fallen SS Galician and maybe other uh, divisions by making sure they're buried properly. So they go around, find them, confirm, dig them up, bury them. Along with all the other Nazis. All this for one guy that fought and died for the wrong side. Look at that there, look, see that? There's one of the Balkan crews beam crosses, so this is just a truck and it has these logos on it. Just a truck. It's another vehicle that has it on it. Is that a World War II era logistics truck? <laughs> yeah, that's what this was. They're out of order, I think. Man, look at that guy there. He really looks the part. Fuck's sake. Man, you have to bless the dirt as well. My god. Someone else has to do it in case he didn't do it right himself. Come on. Or is that just two different ranks in it? Yeah, this is definitely just out of order.
Yep, militant wing of the Ukrainian National Assembly. So it's like they're saying the fight goes on today. The fight didn't end when all these guys died and they lost. They were shattered. Because the fight still goes on here through these guys. And Azov. And Idar. And all these other neo Nazi paramilitary divisions. Even if they haven't been rolled into the state army like Azov has. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Blessing themselves. And they all know what to do. Got to drill into them from when they're young. So all that lifelong indoctrination and training, it's now being reinforced here by burying Nazis. While there's Reichsadlers and fucking crosses and swastikas and all kinds of shit. Little kids here. It's a lot of guys singing. Enough of this. Oh man, that guy has a lot. Holy shit, what a beast. Look at all that, he's got like fucking 10 or 15 medals. I recognise this one. I can't remember. I can't remember the significance of this. If anyone knows what this means, let me know. But I think it's just orthodox. Okay, that guy, he's got a fucking mohawk. And he's got... I think this is... Trizub as well. Yeah, it's gotta be. Necklaces. There's quite a lot of people at this, a lot of kids, it's like 10 kids I've seen so far. A lot of cameras, tripods. Some expensive cameras here. I saw a woman with a nick on around her neck or cannon. And that's it. So there you have it. 
a fucking Ukrainian funeral of a former service member, <laughs> to put it lightly. And before I stop, I'll add this. The Times of Israel, in May of 2021, hundreds in Ukraine attend marches celebrating Nazi SS soldiers. For the first time ever, a parade celebrating 14th Waffen Grenadier Division of SS, made up of ethnic Ukrainians, takes place in capital Kiev. Hundreds of Ukrainians attended marches celebrating Nazi SS soldiers, including the first such event in Kiev. The so-called embroidery march took place in the capital. It was a force set up under German occupation auspices comprised of ethnic Ukrainians and German volunteers and conscripts. The marchers held banners displaying the unit symbol. Yep, SS Galician, three crowns, the lion. Uh, let's skip down to an interesting part. Uh... Ukraine has a large minority of ethnic Russians who oppose the glorification of Nazi collaborators. Such actions were taboo in Ukraine until the early 2000s, when nationalists demanded and obtained state recognition for collaborators as heroes for their actions against the Soviet Union, which dominated Ukraine until 1991. Israel's foreign ministry and Ukrainian Jews who according to a 2020 demographic study number, about 47,000, have protested the veneration of the first Galician and other collaborators, but the collaborators' popularity has soared following the 2014 war with Russia. President Volodymyr Zelensky, who is Jewish, condemned the embroidery marches, which had been conducted legally, and he said, we categorically condemn any manifestation of propaganda of totalitarian regimes, in particular the National Socialist, and attempts to revise truth about World War II. So he is describing veneration of Ukrainian Nazis as being historical revisionism. And if you want to know what the fuck I'm talking about here, then get a load of this. This will be the last thing we look at. So this this is Europe at War by Norman Davies and he said here the Jews of the region had already been killed by the Nazis so 1943 to 44 the wrath of the UPA fell on the helpless Poles the German occupiers who had more urgent business fighting the Red Army did not intervene. Villages were torched Roman Catholic priests were axed or crucified. Churches were burned with all of their parishioners. Isolated farms were attacked by gangs carrying pitchforks and kitchen knives. Throats were cut. Pregnant women were bayoneted. Children were cut in two. Men were ambushed in the fields and led away. The perpetrators could not determine the province's future, but at least they could determine that it would be a future without Poles. They killed any number between 200,000 and half a million. And this is the UPA of... Bandera, and you saw books with that guy on it at this funeral. Oh, and this is another thing, I have to include this. So, this is a paper by Pears Anders Rudling, 2012, and he writes here that. Uh, Alright, so here's the oath that SS recruits took, I swear before God this holy oath that in the battle against Bolshevism I will give absolute obedience to the commander-in-chief of the German armed forces Adolf Hitler and as a brave soldier I will always be prepared to lay down my life for this oath. The oath to Hitler was obligatory until the last month of the division's existence. There's no overt indication that the unit in any way was dedicated to Ukrainian statehood, let alone independence. The volunteers committed themselves to German victory, the new European order and to Adolf Hitler personally. The division was led by German officers who had been directly involved in the perpetration of the Holocaust and atrocities against Belarusian and Ukrainian civilians. The commander from 20th October 1943 until the end of the war was SS Oberfuhrer Fritz Freitag, a fanatical National Socialist. Freitag had made his career through the police establishment. At the initial phases of the German invasion of the Soviet Union, Freitag had served within the command staff of the Reichsführer SS, to which he reported directly. He had commanded the 1st SS Motorized Infantry Brigade, which operated separately or alongside the Einsatzgruppen, a unit involved in ruthless subjugation of the local populations and mass murder of Jews. 
In a typical entry dated to the 24th of August 1941, Freitag diligently reported 114 prisoners taken, 283 Jews shot, and a haul of captured booty amounting to only two guns, three heavy and six light machine guns. And this is the really shocking shit. The Waffen SS Galizia and worked alongside one of the most brutal counterinsurgency units of Nazi Germany, the dreaded SS Sonder Battalion Dorlevanger, a unit which included rapists, murderers, and the criminally insane, which carried out brutal anti partisan activities in Belarus and Poland, and the no less brutal suppression of the Warsaw Uprising in 1944. Waffen SS Galizia and Dorlevanger transferred officers between their units. Magal had served in the SS Sonder Battalion Dorlevanger before he was appointed the chief supply officer of Waffen SS Galizia. On 2nd of March 1944. And yeah, this goes on. I'll link all this stuff in the description. They don't care about any of this stuff. There's obviously a lot of massive disconnects going on here. First of all, there's a disconnect between the popular Ukrainian consciousness and the reality of what these divisions did and what they are and what they represent. And then on top of that, you have a disconnect between what people in the West think about all of these things to the extent that in Canada a memorial to the SS Galician can be defaced and you actually have outright Nazi denialism. This shit here, get a load of this. SS Vladimir Ukrainian Cemetery. This is in fucking Canada, Oaksville, Ontario from 1984. Look at that shit. We have Nazis being celebrated in fucking Canada. Look at that, there's the SS Galician, Three Crowns Lion, and then you have the UPA, the Ukrainian Insurgent Army, Ukrainian Insurgent Army. They're the ones that bayoneted pregnant women and killed kids. They were more horrific than even the SS Galician. So you have it. This unifies... SS Galician with the UPA and that is on top of the coat of arms of Ukraine and the heart of Canada, Oaksville, Ontario. And this got vandalised in June 2020 and then again I think Oaksville's mayor Rob Burton commented that the memorial was repugnant to him but the contents of private cemeteries was out of his reach otherwise he would have had it removed years ago. Good on you, Rob Burton. What a fucking lad. That's it. Do not stand Nazism and fascism in any city you're the mayor of. Good on you. I know absolutely nothing else about you except for that. Oof, what's this here? In 2015, Burton apologised for a series of tweets comparing Stephen Harper's use of veterans and the Canadian Corps of Commissionaries commissioners to Mussolini's black shirts and Hitler's brown shirts. Well, he's on the mark about this, but if you look at this shit... Oh, Pers Anders Rudling. That's the guy I already read from. Uh, and John Paul Himka. He's someone else that I've came across when I've been reading about this stuff. But, uh, if you look at this here, look, look. Alexandra Chizic, Vice President of the Ukrainian Canadian Congress, called these claims long disproven fabrications. The fuck does that mean? How can you fabricate something and then have it be disproven? That is not how burden of proof and falsifiability works. Long disproven fabrications is an extremely tenuous assessment. (laughs) If I fabricate that there are fucking fairies flying around inside my asshole that are invisible, You cannot disprove that. It's a complete fabrication, but you can't disprove it. Most fabrications are impossible to refute because they're not falsifiable, so this just seems like an unlettered fucking hand wave from a fucking idiot that that knows full well that you cannot possibly hand wave away any of this. Look at that. This is what we're dealing with here, and this is part of why I decided to cover this, because there's so much bullshit and misinformation and fucking lies around this stuff. You are a fucking liar. You are a liar. This is the revisionism that Zelensky was talking about when he condemned the marches in Kiev last year. This revisionism here. And then you have a Ukrainian Nazi apologist here. I don't know where she said it. Let's have a look. Let's see where it was said. 
Russian embassy charges monuments to alleged Nazi collaborators in Oakville, which is true, we've just been over all that, and it was denied by the Ukrainian Canadian Congress. Shame on them. Shame on them. But yeah, I think uh, this shows it here. Look look at all this, look at all this. So they're they're documenting it as well. But they'll just deny it. They just deny it all. So it shows how rotten this whole situation is. It precedes the invasion two months ago. It precedes the beginning of the war eight years ago. And it precedes even the breakup of the Soviet Union. It goes all the way back to World War Two and even further back. And this is what we're dealing with here. And if you deny any of this, you are being an apologist for Nazism and you're engaging in historical revisionism. And shame on you.